So, the enigmas. Elgar's restless mind complicated matters right from the first performance in 1899. His program note, first of all, made a great and paradoxical to-do about the fact that the friends pictured within need never have been mentioned publicly. And then it goes on to say, and how fervently I agree with Elgar, that the variations should be appreciated merely as a piece of music. And then he says, the enigma I will not explain. Its dark saying must be left unguessed. Whoa, what's this enigma? We now call the piece the Enigma Variations instead of Variations on an original theme. But the word Enigma first appeared after Elgar had finished the piece. He wrote it above the first part of the theme. Elgar's programme note then introduces a final complication. Further, through and over the whole set, another and larger theme goes but is not played. In 1911, Elgar attempted to clarify all this. It may be understood that these personages, the friends, comment or reflect on the original theme, and each one attempts a solution of the enigma. And in 1929, Elgar returned to the friends pictured within. The various numbers of the work are labelled with either initials or pseudonyms. In the course of time, some of these references have been identified, but there is nothing to be gained in an artistic or musical sense by solving the enigma of the personalities. So, is the enigma merely the identity of the friends pictured within? Or is it the theme? Or is it another tune? Or is the another larger theme not a tune at all? Some people are obsessed by conspiracy theories about the assassination of JFK. And some are obsessed by Elgar's enigma, which is just how he wanted it. He's got the world's attention. But just for fun, let's look at a few of the answers. The answer is the number pi, because the first four notes of the tune, with regard to their position in the scale, run three, one, four, two. Three point one four two. Then, after 11 notes, there are two falling sevenths. 11 times 2 sevenths equals 22 over 7 equals pi. And then, of course, the first 24 notes are all either crotchets or quavers, which all have black note heads. Four and 20 black notes baked in a, yep, baked in a pie. Or oh, the answer is the Turin Shroud. Why? Because Luther's hymn, Ein fester Borgist unser Gott, has 24 letters in those six words, and the Enigma theme has 24 notes in six bars. I'm not quite sure how this one works, but it's true that in 1898, Roman Catholics were just beginning to be shown the first revealing photographic negatives of the Turin Shroud, and Elgar's fortuitous Catholicism, his mother was a convert, which, of course, reinforced his feelings of alien... Or oh, the answer was his daughter's name, because the first six notes of the theme transposed to A minor are nearly an anagram of Charis, his daughter's name, itself uh, an amalgamation of his wife's names, Caroline and Alice. Oh, and did I mention that the Elgar's house name, Craig Lee, is an anagram of C.A. and E. Elgar? Or the answer is sonnet number 66 by Shakespeare, which Elgar was fond of quoting, because dark sayings suggest dark ladies. The corroborative detail of some of these theories is Amazingly convincing. I'm completely convinced until I put the book down. But they can't all be true, can they? If they were, then the enigma variations really are the meaning of life. Then there are those who think that the answer is a tune. Old Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Or now the day is over in the minor key? Now the day is over. I found a way of making three blind mice fit, but I'm not sure that helps very much. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run. See 
And what about rule Britannia? Elgar said to the subject of one of the variations, you of all people ought to know. Her name was Dora Penny. And on the back of the Victorian penny coin was none other than Britannia with her trident. And another friend, Rosa Burley, when asked whether she was a variation, replied, I'm the theme. Rosa Burley, R.B., rule Britannia. I'm a bit of a sceptic about all this. Elgar knew so much about codes and ciphers and anagrams and fitting melodies together that it would have been easy for him to start any number of wild goose chases. Elgar himself was the biggest enigma of all, and the way to understand him is to listen to his music with an open heart. That's how he composed it. As he said himself, music is in the air all around us. You simply take as much as you need. That's the key to one of the world's greatest composers. As a young promenader put it back in the 1920s, when Sir Edward Elgar comes on to conduct, you feel it really might be Beethoven next. <laughs>